in order to be relevant, you have to know what's happening in the market, but you have to approach bringing yourself to the market at whatever point in life you are. If you learn to love yourself and take good care of yourself and not compare yourself, you'll be more freed up to bring yourself to the marketplace in the way that makes you stand out. Have you hit a wall when it comes to growing your business? Then welcome to the Wingnut Social Podcast, helping home professionals and luxury brands accelerate their success with proven marketing strategies and expert industry practices. Now, here's your host, Darla Powell. This episode is brought to you by interior design life and business coach, Desi Cresswell. Go to DesiCresswell.com to find out more about her new course, The Out of Overwhelm. My goodness, this is going to be a game changer for you guys who are sitting around procrastinating, you know, twiddling your thumbs it, just because there's just so much on your plate. Check it out. Check it out at DesiCresswell.com slash coaching. That's DesiCresswell.com slash coaching, or stay tuned for the break to get some more details. Hey, and welcome to the Wingnut Social Podcast. I'm your host, Darla Jethro Powell. I am the Grand High Poobah of all things Wingnut. Thank you so much for joining us. If you're a, a new listener to the show, we cover all things marketing and business for the interior design or home pro industry because I am an interior designer. I had an interior design firm in Miami, Florida called Darla Powell Interiors. And I have since chosen to pivot and focus on marketing full time because I love it. And there's only one of me, unless I can clone somebody in my basement lab, which I, I probably shouldn't speak about on a podcast. The government's not listening, right? Excuse me while I adjust my tinfoil hat. Okay. <laughs> Today we have a terrific show for you. We have guest Gregory Ann Cox. Yes, you heard that correct. Her first name is Gregory. And you know what? The first thing I thought of when I heard that her name was Gregory. Do you guys remember um, Michael Learned, <laughs> the actress whose first name was Michael? See, now this show is for people in a certain demographic. Um, you know, younger women are going to get takeaways or men, you know, hey, are going to get takeaways from the show too. But remember Michael Learned? So when I heard Gregory Ann Cox on a woman, I was like, that is pretty bad. Ass. I had to interview her. I had to get behind her. So let's get into Gregory Ann's bio. She is a message wizard who helps coaches and other entrepreneurs stand out with sound like them copy that converts without sounding salesy. She also offers copy rehab. Boy, I know some people that need that for tired old website copy that gets ignored when it should be getting you leads. Wingnuts, help me in welcoming Gregory Ann Cox to the Wingnut Social Podcast. Hey there, Gregory Ann Cox. Welcome to the Wingnut Social Podcast. How the hell are you? Ah, uh, the hell I am fine. Thank you very much, Darla. <laughs> I can tell we're going to get along just fine. I was telling the audience how your first name, Gregory, is, you know, remind me of Michael Learned, who's one of my favorite actresses. I think she was back in the 70s. Can you just tell me real quick how it is that your first name is Gregory? I can. My mother and father, I never met my father. He died right before Aww. I was born, but they must have had conversations about the name Gregory. It was my grandmother's maiden name. And when I was female, there wasn't any more discussion because I was born on St. Gregory's Day <laughs> in an Irish Catholic family, and that kind of sealed the deal. I love it. Do you get a lot of people calling, you know, do you, you have to explain it a lot to people saying, I, well, I guess the Anne helps, right? And yeah, you would think so, but people want to call me Anne. They think I don't know how to write my name when I write Gregory <laughs> Anne. They say, I was just at the doctor the other day, and this woman was going Anne, 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 and I sometimes get nudgy and annoying. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to help her out. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Anyway, I love it. I think it's badass. So congrats to you on that. And also, I know you have a podcast that addresses relevancy for women of a certain age, shall we say? Because I, we were talking in the green room that a lot of my audience are. People who are in their second or third careers, entrepreneurs, solopreneurs that aren't in their 20s, that are even aren't in their 30s. Like we have um, guests who've been on the podcast who are in their 60s, who are just starting their interior design firm. And a lot of uh, people in the audience need to hear that that's okay. You know, that we, we were at a certain age, that we're still relevant, that you can do it. It's not over for you. It's not like, oh, well, you know, those days have passed. So talk to me a little bit about that experience, your podcast, and I want to speak to those people, and then we'll get into the copywriting portion of this episode. Sure. I think relevance is a great word, and I want to say that I think we decide to be relevant or not. There's a lot of room in our culture these days to 
listen to the negative chatter about we're no longer relevant, we're getting old, you should retire, la la la. And then there is also lots of space for new conversations about how we can start businesses at any age, look and feel our best at any age, write books, travel around the world, go, you know, whatever it is, it just, where we put our focus, we'll go on that path or the other path. Right. And I choose to help the women that I work with and the ones on my podcast, listeners on my podcast, the name of it's Rebellious Wellness. So it's all about finding your inner rebel to stand up for whatever suits you at your age, whatever that my age might be. I love that. Are, do you know, are you familiar with Gary Vaynerchuk at all? Of course. Okay. Yeah. Well, he, yeah. All right. I figured you might. He has this speech and I'll, I'll post it in the show notes, which is about, you know, you're not too old to start your new business. I mean, look at science, look at medicine right now. You could live to be a hundred. You might have another 50 years ahead of you. You know, you have to look at it that way. And they say what the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. The the second best time is today. You know, get on, get on Absolutely. Because 10 years from now, you're going to say, oh man, look what I could have done 10 years ago. You know, you're going to get older anyway. You might as, if that's something you want to do, you want to do it. What do you say to people in the audience if they have that inner doubt or those inner voices that are like, you know what, it's a young kid's game. I'm too old. I should retire. What are some words of wisdom I should say? I would ask the person who has that mindset or those questions to go back to a time in their life when they might have also felt that way. Because we feel this way relative to the younger people or the older people or the prettier people or the richer people. The conversation has been going on in our heads, but somehow we've made it to where we are today. I would also say that there might be a few things that we wish we had done at a different age. Now might be the time or that time might have passed, but how does that make you feel mm -hmm. to know that you wanted to try some? Like I always wanted to go back to school for psychology because I didn't get to finish my degree. And I had a career as a coach. Uh, I mean, as a chef, I was in food business for 30 years. I was successful. And one day I just couldn't cook anymore. So I thought, what am I going to do? As it turns out, I couldn't go back to school. There wasn't a school nearby that I could get to. I was living uh, in the Hamptons. So I found life coaching. And that was another opportunity for me to use those same kinds of skills of helping people with their mindset and their and transformation and things like that. So where your attention goes, your energy flows, you know, the old <laughs> saying. So look at what you might want to do and how it will make you feel if you don't do that, or at least try it. What do you say to the the woman or the or the, the client who comes to you or and says, do you work primarily with me, women or you're equal? I do. Okay. I do. okay. Yeah. So what do you say to the woman that comes to you and says, you know, um, I'm not as young anymore. I'm not as pretty. You know, I have an extra 20 pounds and they, they're kind of shooting on themselves or they're, you know, they have that, that negativity and that self doubt revolving around their age because the society, although I do see some changes, coming on, you know, that are more um, friendly towards the aging population because our demographic is growing. When they're comparing themselves to other people or to younger women, how do you help them quiet that doubt or that self-talk? I would say that it's individual, like the old, it depends. However, there's only so much mental energy we have every day, physical energy as well. But our brain, it is proven now that we only have so much willpower, attention span, these things. What do you want to put that energy towards? Comparing ourselves is a loser's game. Yeah. Instagram makes it very hard not to. I get it. <laughs> However, I have envy for people that have beautiful graphics on their Instagram page, not so much how they look better than me or worse than whatever. But honestly, loving ourselves is the most powerful mindset and energy. I know it sounds woo and girly and whatever, <laughs> but, and that can look like however it looks like. For some people, loving themselves might be losing that 20 pounds, going out and trying to run a half marathon. For, it could be body acceptance. Right. It really is. You are who you are. You got where you got because of all this great stuff, not just the bad stuff. And the wrinkles going to come. <laughs> They're going to come. And I always say that the opposite alternative is not quite as good as being here wrinkled. <laughs> Unless you have Cher's plastic surgeon, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, that's true. She's she's sacrificing babies somewhere. I don't know what's oh going on with that God. woman, but yeah, there, there's there's definitely some kind of underground deal with the devil going on with Cher. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, cool. Well, thank you. Thank you for that insight. So I, I just wanted, I know there's someone out there that did need to hear that and we could probably go on forever about that. So I also want to talk about your ability to sift through copywriting, really crappy copywriting <laughs> for business people and make it such that it speaks to people and helps to get clients. So this is the second half of this podcast is a little bit of a two-parter, which I don't do a lot, but I just, I wanted to hit both of these angles with you. Tell me a little bit about that side of your business. I'm assuming it's a different business. And then we'll dig into that. It is. It's called Be More Marketable. It is rooted in a clear understanding of what a person really does for their client. A interior design person might say, I make a home beautiful. And I would agree. However, when they're talking to somebody and they want to stand out from all the other people that make home makes home beautiful, they might say, I turn your inner dream bedroom. I take it out of your head and put it into the four walls of your house, right? You have to find that's what we really do for people is we give them a feeling. And once we can uncover that in the person I might be writing for, then we have to decide who they are working for and what is it that that person wants to hear. Exactly. So copywriting is less about my capability as a writer, although I've studied extensively in the persuasion and optimization, all that stuff. And really, it is much more finding out what the client that you're working with wants and what you really do for them. And then we can put words on paper that express that in a way that helps people stand out. Easy to sound like everybody else. Exactly. And I love that you said that. And that's one of the things that we do here at Wingnut Social, especially with our strategy, is figuring out what your positioning is how you yeah. are different from the competition. And although you don't really want to focus on the competition in a comparison kind of way, you do kind of need to know how you can differentiate yeah. yourself from them and speak to that ideal client. We just had Paul Ace on last week and he was talking about conversational marketing and speaking, you know, like, cause you're talking to real live, you know, flesh and blood human beings. And, and it, it does um, evoke feelings and emotions because at the end of the day, you don't want to be a commodity commodity. You don't want to be just a utility or, you know, something you want it. You're, you're selling yourself, you're selling those feelings, you're selling the, the solutions to the pain points that are coming into you for that. And you have to be able to express that in your copy. And so many people don't on their website, or they'll make it all about themselves as, you know, you should be making the reader, the hero, right? And you should be like telling how you're going to be like the sage, like the little Yoda, and you're going to help them, give them advice to make them the hero in their space. And here's the services you're going to offer. Tell me a little bit about um, some of the the problems that you see that come to you and how, you, how you're fixing them. Like, do you have an example or a case study? You know, Darla, one of the things that happens often is what you mentioned. The It's the I problem. It's I am a coach. I, I welcome you to my website. Nobody cares to <laughs> welcome them, right? Yep. We waste, we only have so much real estate on a website, on an about page, on a landing page. What we want to do is drop people into their problem as soon as we possibly can. What I see is people filling up the page with, you know, beautiful descriptions and maybe they're saying about features and benefits of their course, but they haven't really connected with the reptilian brain. We're speaking to the old prehistoric brain in our heads, not the actual person in front of us. We will eventually talk to that person. They come around. But initially, and the reptilian brain doesn't want to hear about I. So that's one of the main problems I encounter. And the other thing is too many words, too much blah, blah, less words, more powerful story, extremely powerful, not necessarily your story, but it could be mm -hmm. not you, Darla, the person I get people you. listening. Mm -hmm. And I think the other problem is another thing you touched upon is people not bringing enough of themselves. They are trying to please everybody. Mm -hmm. And they don't want to be too quirky or too nerdy or too this, but the people that are gonna you're gonna enjoy working with and that are your people want to recognize that in them, that about you, because they have it in them. All right, guys, by now you're familiar with Desi Creswell, right? She's an amazing coach. She's an award-winning interior designer, and now she's a life and business coach for us, for the interior design industry in her amazing course, How Many Times Amazing, Out of Us launched on July 13th, and it's a three-month group coaching program with weekly calls Tuesday, 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. Yes, we're bucking the system. No Eastern Standard Time there, you rebel Desi you. And these are going to be with Desi, where you're going to have the opportunity to be coached live while learning from watching your peers get coached. And I have to tell you, Desi and I had a session 
on, you can see, see it. It's still on the Wingnut Social IGTV where Desi, man, she dug in. And I'm not going to say it was the most comfortable thing I ever went through, but it was incredibly helpful. And you can see how skilled she is at getting the juice out of you, getting the pain points and helping you and walking you through it. So this group is for you if you're overwhelmed and stressed, or if you're burned out, solution that allows you to grow your business, or if you're just stuck in a rut and you need a new approach. Go to DesiCreswell.com forward slash coaching. You will not be disappointed. She is amazing. And head on over to the Wingnut Social Instagram and check out just, you get a little sample. Just get a little, little sample of her genius and how good she is. Again, that's DesiCreswell.com forward slash coaching. I'm so glad that you said that because with my design firm in Miami, it wasn't until I did start doing that and just said, you know what? Screw it. I'm not bougie. I'm not your, your stereotypical interior designer. I'm just me and just started coming out and being authentic and transparent with my personality that I started getting ideal clients in a ton of them <laughs> that were my, you know, yeah, right. And it was, it was fun to work with them. They weren't the pain in the, the butt clients that I had prior to that because I wasn't projecting you know, my true personality, I wasn't attracting my tribe, so to speak. So this is something that we have said on the podcast, but I just love it when guests, expert guests like yourself come on and just, just pound that in with a hammer because people don't believe me. They'll still come into Wingnut and they're like, no, I want to do everything to every, you know, be everything to everybody. And I'm like, no, the magic happens when you niche and you show them your, your unique personality, because that's when you develop those super fans people that really vibe with you. They feel like they know, like, and trust you because they're coming in your home. It's a very intimate thing for to have someone come in the home and, and judge, which is essentially what you're doing. They're their home, their interior design, mm-hmm. how their house is laid out or something. So th- thank you. Thank you so much, <laughs> so much sure. for saying that. Do you have any uh, case studies or examples of someone that came to you with some really crappy copy that you turned around and then, you know, they knocked it out of the park? Without giving sure. away any names, of course. So let's of protect course. the innocent. Let's protect the innocent. I worked for a number of years as a business coach as well as copywriting for a young woman who has a social media agency. Wow! And she was super smart and did her own design work. But when it came to the copy on the pages. It was a little too much like young and flip and cute, and she wanted to be taken seriously. She was young and cute and flip, but not for a business person, right? right? That's not the side of the personnel, the person. However, we did want to bring in the youthfulness and the quirky, fun things. Like she loves hedgehogs, right? There was all of this. So anyway, we redid the website, and at the same time, she launched a challenge to drive traffic to the website and get more leads. So we did the opt-in page, the landing page, to get people to opt into the challenge. We got a 40% conversion rate, which is, she already had a Facebook group, but she didn't really have, her list was probably only about 120 people. And so between getting the conversion, getting them to opt in to the challenge, playing with her in her Facebook group, and then people looking for her and going to her website, she added about, there's a five-day challenge, she added about 300 subscribers. Wow. Through the website and then some through the, you know, through the challenge. And then some people came through her and she actually did, I think, three clients from that within the first six months. So, so we're not saying she wasn't business like. She was just right is in her personality. So we weren't pushing anything that wasn't her. She was just, no. she was just honing in too much on one particular aspect and it wasn't reading as. Not only is she fun, but she's, you know, she can also, you know, do my social or whatever and and really make it work. And we'd like to call that curated authenticity. You know, you're, Mm -hmm. you're showing your real personality. You might be pulling some stuff back, pushing some other stuff forward. It's not like I like to say you're in your underwear eating ice cream on the sofa and posting it on social. (laughs) You might, you might be doing it. I'm not saying I do that. I do that. But uh, really, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I, I love that so much. It, it's so important to say that. And I, my eyes lit up when you said she likes hedgehogs. I see how, how weird that is and how unique that is. But I guarantee to you that if you saw someone like that and, and their quirky thing was, I like hedgehogs, you'd remember. With her it. holding a little tiny hedge, like who doesn't love little tiny creatures? And there's this great photo of her right. on social saying, yes, these are the kind of things that I will 
put on my social media. It may not, hedgehogs may not be for everyone, but you know. <laughs> that should be a life motto, right? Hedgehogs may not be for everyone. <laughs> but, but, but I, I absolutely love that. That's very memorable. And that's the kind of thing, like, so I have a thing with my brand that's like, I'm into whiskey and little Debbie cakes and stuff. And it seems kind of silly, <laughs> but, but I'll be damned. If- Together, darling, like, Sipping well, I have a whiskey the whiskey and now, eating a- but I don't have a Debbie cake now. But sometimes, okay. sometimes you get like Swiss cake rolls and whiskey you have a nice flavor profile. Mm. Uh, but I'll be damned if people don't remember that stuff. That just a little oh. silly stuff. It's just absolutely right, or they resonate with it, or they're like, "Oh, I like Debbie cakes too." And then you have a conversation going, and you, I've made so many friends just through little silly facts like that. Friends, absolutely. partners, business people, just through silly copywriting like that. But also on the same token, to your point. We have the case studies with the bat, you know, the proof and the serious business writing yeah. also, because we, you know, you have to, because it's a business. And at the end of the day, guess what? You want to make money. Do you do websites as well? Because I know you were talking about the marketing with the lead magnet and uh, like campaigns. Was this on her website or where was this? Yeah. So I wrote the copy for her new website, which she had had a website, but it was kind of a one pager. Yeah. Like a DIY kind of. Yeah. 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 So I wrote the copy for her website when she expanded it. At the same time we did that challenge with the landing page, I helped her with the sequence, the email sequence, the welcome sequence that people would get once they opted in. And my favorite thing is not to write website copy. My favorite thing is to rehab people's websites. Okay. To take the the critical eye, the microscope, and say, what is wrong with this page? What's right about this page? How does the opt-in really feed your people? What's the traffic like? Okay, here's why I think that's happening. Are the pictures loading fast enough for Google to like you and send you traffic. There are all those things behind this. I love all that. Okay. Um, I can write copy, obviously. And if somebody gets a website makeover, mm-hmm. I will give them copy makeover as well. I just don't prefer to start from scratch because I think people have a many people come with lots of juicy stuff that I wouldn't be able to pull out of them. Right. Yeah. So you, it kind of gives you like the bones, like some yeah, exactly. framework exactly. into their personality. Do you have a process that you go to where you add to that though, like a questionnaire or do you, do you pull additional stuff? I have stuff? a questionnaire and it includes what's your favorite flavor of jelly bean? <laughs> Licorice. Oh my God, me too. <laughs> no, I totally am stealing the black ones out of a jar all the time. <laughs> me too. And nobody cares. Everybody else hates. No, I know. Everybody's like, here, yeah, have, yeah, have, have, have hell have, you take want. All the- yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a great position to be in. <laughs> That's funny. The reason that I ask about jelly beans is because the jelly beans are our people. Oh. And a licorice one has a different characteristic, a different flavor profile. My chef past is coming in here. Then a red one, which is super popular and happy and, you know, and people and yellow is sunny. So anyway, that's part of the process. I try to make it fun because it can be so darn boring, Darla. Don't you agree to fill in a long questionnaire? Yeah. A lot of people don't want to do it. No, I know. I know. They, they, we get resistant. Some, oh, at least not, not a wing nut because sometimes you know, you have to do it for marketing. We need some stuff. We build on for that. Yeah. But for the on the interior design side, for uh, clients that wanted work done, they, yeah, they were kind of resistant to that. And there's, there is actually as a school, a, a thought there to not do a questionnaire for them for, for interior design clients to just make it hands on because it's such a luxury optional. What's the word I'm looking for? Service. You know, it's, gosh, there's, mm-hmm. there's a word there. Jerry Saruti, what's the word? She's, she's the uh, show's grammar expert. <laughs> um, I think I know the word you're trying yeah, to think of. Yeah. What is the like, word? I'm, I'm talking. It's like coaching is not a necessary <laughs> luxury. item. There it's it is. Luxury. <laughs> God, how much whiskey have I had so far? Um, not that much. Yeah, it's a luxury. I <laughs> I will say this. I'm 53 and I, my memory isn't quite what it used to be. So <laughs> I do have to get around that sometimes uh, for the second or third career. Actually, this is my third career. So there is that. I don't I don't know if you, you're facing that with any of your clients. but Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Myself. Yes. <laughs> Myself, my clients. Last <laughs> night, my aunt, I was on Skype with my aunt who's 88. Aww. She literally was in the middle of a great sentence and went, I don't remember anything I just said. Okay, that's all right. Let's talk about something else, you know. I'm 53 and I do that, but I think it's more of a reflection of me being a wingnut and having the, uh, the attention span situation. My focus is a little a little bit messed up. Wingnut has always been one of my favorite words, by the way, just so you know. My husband, who's English, didn't know what I was like. Oh, my God, this woman's business is called Wingnut Social. He's like, what is that? That's my nickname. 
Yeah, I've told this on the show before, but real quick, I used to be a cop and I, my ADD was so bad that my squad mates would say, she's such a wingnut, just out of the blue, no real. <laughs> so it just kind of stuck. I answer to it. I love it. To this day, they, that's what they call me. I'll remember that. <laughs> wingnut social. All right. So Gregory Ann, before we get into the what up wingnut round, do you have any last words of copywriting or relevancy advice for the listeners in the audience that need to hear it? And then we will continue. I'm going to combine both of those. Oh, oh, amazing. I'm going to say that in order to be relevant, you have to know what's happening in the market, but you have to approach bringing yourself to the market at whatever point in life you are. Just like my young client was being young and cute. We can't be that. We're not young. We could be cute. (laughs) (laughs) If we're not young, we're not young. You can speak with a level of authority or whatever it is that you bring to the thing that you're starting. And if you learn to love yourself and take good care of yourself and not compare yourself, you'll be more freed up to bring yourself to the marketplace in the way that makes you stand out. Love it. That's expert. That's expert advice right there. Gregory Ann Cox, now I have to ask you if you're ready for the What Up Wingnut round. I am. I was born ready, Darla. Now it's time for What Up Wingnut. Wingnut. What would the hashtag on your tombstone be? Rebellious. (laughs) You're stuck on a deserted island and can have only one of your favorite foods. What is it? Chicken wings. Ooh, good one. That's a first. That's a first. Please recommend a book that has had a profound impact on you either personally or professionally. I'm going to have to go with personally. And the book is called Overstory by Richard Powers. It's about 600 pages. And each chapter is all the characters are trees with the exception of about six or seven humans. It's one of the most beautifully written books. And I learned so much about trees and how they communicate. Wow. It's mind blowing. What's the title again? Over story. Over story. I love trees. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a tree hugger a little bit, a little bit of a tree hugger. I'm a retired cop tree hugger. I don't think there's too many of those. Oh, that's a first too. (laughs) I think it might be. (laughs) All right, Gregory Ann Cox, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Please tell the listeners out there where they can go to find out more about your awesome sauce services. Thank you for asking, Darla. Well, if you want some health support, rebelliouswellnessover50.com is where you'll find it. I also have a podcast of that name. And if you want copywriting support or marketing, things like that, it's bemoremarketable.com. Awesome. Gregory, thank you so much for joining us and dropping these wisdom bombs. We really appreciate you. Have an amazing week. Thank you. Okay, so that was a little bit of a twofer, which we haven't done before, but Gregory brought a lot to the table and I forget where I found her. I want to say I found her on like podcaster, podcastguest.com or something like that. And there's just something about her energy that just spoke to me. And the fact that she had the rebellious wellness over 50 podcast, of course, that caught my eye because, you know, that's the thing. That's a recurring theme that we have here because I started my interior design business at 47, you know, going strong now at 53. Holy, <laughs> I'm 53, <laughs> but 53 years young. Right. And then she has the marketing agency focusing on the the copywriting, which is so important. And she knows she knows what it's been. She's been there. She knows how to write the copy. She you heard it. You heard it. She had everything on the money. So take her advice, make sure that you are writing your copy on your website to, I mean, you tell your story somewhat, but you want to, you always want to turn it around to how that part of your story is going to help your client. You know, it's not all about you. It's not the Darla show or it's not the Susan McNugget show. You want to say, I was a former cop, but that means you can trust me in your house. This is what I can do for you. My logistics skills are amazing. I like to tell my clients too, I get shot at a lot less and that that's always a big hit. And when she was talking about the reptilian brain, <laughs> talking about being in your 50s, I wrote down in my notes here, reptilian brain V. Do you guys remember that series? <laughs> that series V back in the day, I want to say it's in the 80s. That was the first thing I thought of because clearly not right in the head, but also it's... um. You know, you people that are my age out there listening, you you know, you know what I'm talking about, especially if you're if you're into Debbie Cakes, whiskey and science fiction or hedgehogs. Now, all right, guys, that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed the show. Make sure that you tune into Wingnut Premium at wingnutpremium.com, which is a members only behind a paywall of fourteen dollars and ninety five cents a month where we have extra takeaways and bonus information to help you market your interior design business. 
It is an amazing group. It is growing steadily day by day. Not only do you get four bonus episodes of the Wingnut Social podcast premium a month, but you get a special elite membership in the Facebook group, which is Facebook premium, which is only for those members. And it is a nice, cozy little group. You can go in there and ask us anything about your social media marketing. If you have a question about your SEO, if you just want to pop in there and say, Darla, um, hey, where would you happen to get the sofa or do you have a shipping receiving person in Miami? Guess what? Access to me 24-7, except when I'm sleeping, um, might not answer you, but who knows? I tend to sleepwalk sometimes, so you could get lucky. And again, that's wingnutpremium.com. Make sure you go over and hit up our sponsor, Desi Cresswell at desicresswell.com. We like to support our sponsors because that's what helps keep this show on the air. And until next Wednesday, remember to get out there get uncomfortable, and be great. You've reached the end of this episode of Wingnut Social, but that's only the first step into accelerating your business the Wingnut way. Head on over to wingnutsocial.com to see how we can help you take your business from social mediocre to social media master. Gregory Ann Cox is joining us. She is a business coach. Oh, hey. Or if you know what you've been doing, menopause is a and my memory sucks. Good boy, Mango.